You're listening to the Small Business Talk podcast with Kathy Smith. Episode 94. Small Business Talk is a podcast for business owners and entrepreneurs who want a better way to run their businesses without spending years doing it the hard way. Small Business Talk is hosted by Kathy Smith, who has run the same marketing agency for more than 17 years and helped hundreds of business owners achieve their marketing goals. Welcome to Small Business Talk. Today, we're going to continue on from our Instagram series, but today we're going to talk about a couple more social media platforms as well. So what should I post on social media is a question I get a lot. Posting on social media is a constant challenge as the algorithms and rules keep changing. When posting and asking yourself, what should I post on social media? There should be one person that you keep in mind, your very best customer, your avatar, the customer that you just love dealing with, the ones that love you, the ones that will tell everybody about your services and how wonderful you are. Your ideal customer, what are they going to find valuable? What would they like to see or watch? So no matter which social media platform you're posting on, you need to be thinking of that. And your number one objective should be to serve your customer, serve your tribe, create an interest in your account. Five ways that you can create an interest in your account are by being consistent having shareable content, educating or adding valuable content, branded content, and ask for the sale. So let's talk about consistency first. If you are a regular listener to the podcast, you will have heard me talk about consistency a lot. You have to be consistent. There's no point doing social once in a while. Yes, it is social, but people like to see you. So to grow your account, whether you were talking about Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, you need to be posting a minimum of five times a week. And don't discount the weekends because depending on your audience, your weekends might actually be your biggest days. Accommodation, Airbnb, that kind of thing quite often are because that's when people have been looking, are thinking about looking. And generally, Mondays and Tuesdays are slower for that kind of category. So just have a look at your insights and see what days are best for you. And with any of this stuff, it's only a general rule of thumb. You need to look at your insights, your analytics to see what resonates with your customers and your potential customers. I've been following Charlene and Brock Johnson's new Instagram training. I'll put the link in the show notes and experimenting on my Instagram account with increasing my posts. Since I've increased my posts to five times a week over five days, my account has increased by 253%. The interactions have been an increase of almost 200%. And my followers have increased as well. Now with your followers, remember to have a look at how many are joining, but also how many are unsubscribing you will get unsubscribes and that's okay. But if you're getting a lot of unsubscribes, you need to once again, go back to your analytics, your insights and see why your content's not resonating with them. Especially Instagram, they do go through and clean out fake accounts a lot. So don't panic about the unfollows, but just be aware and check out your content and make sure it is actually valuable for your audience. So my increase is just by increasing the quantity of posts and the type of posting. Now I have to really get serious and start looking at my hashtags and doing some research on that, as I described in Small Business Talk episode 92. I'm already getting good results with only implementing half the strategy. So watch this space as I put more time and effort into my actual account, you know, a mechanic's car blows smoke, We spend all day doing it for our clients and we don't do it for ourselves. So that's my plan over the next little bit is to increase the exposure on my actual accounts as well. So like I say, watch this space as I implement it properly and see where the experiment takes us. And if you're interested in what I've been learning, the link's in the show notes. 
Facebook and LinkedIn also require consistency. Remember, if you can't be consistent with all your social media channels, just pick one or two and concentrate on them. And then once you've got those scheduled plan and you've incorporated all the tactics into those, then you can start looking at new ones. No one started by having all their platforms mastered. So just do one well and then incorporate some others as you get time. Shareable content. What should you be sharing? Well, as I said, things that are valuable to your customers. Things that are already getting reach. So with Instagram, you can check out the top results on the hashtags that your ideal customers are using. Now this needs to be customer focused. So it's not what you're using, it's what your customers are using. And yes, you should change your hashtags to what they're looking for. The hashtags that your customers are following and interested in is what you need to be following and using. 80% of your content on Instagram should be shareable. That's when you're in growth mode and if you have under 10,000 followers. So the types of shareable content that you can do are reposting or sharing other people's content, remaking, getting inspiration from other people's content and tweaking it a bit so it's your own. If you're remaking it and you do exactly what somebody else has done, remember to reference and credit them. And educational, valuable content that you have made. So things that you can repost, things like tips, tricks, hacks that your audience will find valuable and things that you can share onto your wall. Inspirational quotes, lovely images and sayings. For Instagram, you will need a third-party app to do reposting. And that gives you the opportunity to credit your author. So please do remember to credit your author because copyright is a big thing and you wouldn't like it if somebody stole your work without crediting you. With Facebook and LinkedIn, you can just share the original post. So therefore, they do get credit. So if you're remaking it, think about tips, hacks and inspiring quotes. But maybe you've had a look at them and the colours are too loud for your brand or the language might not be quite right for you, might not be your tone. In these examples, you can remake them in your own colors and tone. But like I say, remember to credit the original author or change them a bit so they are your original work. For Facebook and Instagram, a photo might work well and the text, you could use theirs or change it a bit. Once again, remember to credit. And please don't outright steal other people's work. Educational valuable content. The easiest way to do educational content on all three platforms is video and live video. Whether you're doing a live or a pre-recorded and adding it as a video later, you need to make sure it is native, not via YouTube. You can always add it to YouTube, of course, but you need to do that separately. Videos often get hundreds of times better reach than other content. Yes, I know we all hate video and I do as well, but it's making a difference. And as I've spoken about quite a lot, it does cut down that trust factor so people can trust you much quicker, much faster. So why wouldn't you load it up to YouTube and then back to Facebook? Well, because they're competitors. YouTube is a direct competitor to Facebook and Instagram. Just load it up through the native Facebook, so where you can load. Or if you do it live, you just do it on the platform that you're wanting to do it on. So straight onto Instagram or straight onto Facebook. And remember to share and save that video as well so that you can then repurpose it onto YouTube or cut it up into Insta stories. Or if it's a longer one, you can always put it into IGTV. So Instagram has short videos up to 59 seconds or then longer videos over 59 seconds is IGTV. But remember when you're doing the IGTV ones, the preview is 15 seconds and then people can click on it to watch more. So make sure when you are doing IGTV that those first 15 seconds are really punchy. That's your introduction. And if people don't like that, they won't watch any more. So that first 15 seconds has to be almost like an ad, something to grab your audience's attention 
something that's exciting, so they'll click through and watch the rest. Branded content. 80% of your content needs to be shareable, so that leaves 20% for your branded content. Now use your branding tastefully and subtly so that people, other people might want to share your content too because it's valuable and that becomes part of their 80% content. So wouldn't that be cool? Big over-the-top branding won't get shared unless you are a big brand with a big following. So follow the guidelines and make sure it is shareable. Branding is important because you want your audience to know who you are and the content that you're providing them so that they can connect with you as a person and as a business. Now we've talked a lot about different contents, that sort of thing, but now it's time to ask for the sale. So remember, social media is social and that's what they're on the platform for, for entertainment or generally just to look and see. You are running a business and without sales and profit, you won't have a business for very long. So you need to let people know that you do have products for sale. But there's a best way to do it and a not so good way to do it. So the best way to do it is by a call to action. Encourage people to go to your website, get your freebie, get more information. Occasionally you can do a direct ask, but curiosity works best. If you're selling makeup, something like that, You might show them an absolute fabulous look that you've just created, but you don't say use this product or that product. You just say, look at my beautiful makeup. DM me for more information. Comment below for more information. Message me for more information. That kind of thing. Let your customers know that the problem that you solve or the results that you've got, and then you can ask them to DM you. And sometimes it's about explaining that problem because not everybody realises the problem they have. They know there's an issue, but they can't quite put their finger on what the problem is. So they don't know where to look for the solution. So that's where your lives and your videos can come in, how you can explain how you have the solution to the problem. And they go, yeah, that's me. I need that. And then they'll look for more information. So if you've liked this and you want to know more about the course that I'm doing with Charlene and Brock Johnson, just jump over to the show notes and the affiliate link will be in there. So now it's your turn to take action. You have listened to lots of tips here. So now it's your turn to think about scheduling some time to actually put these into action and do it on your account. I'd love to hear how you go. And for some other ideas of types of posts that you can try, jump over to my website, catcoent.com.au forward slash resources, and you'll see 47 social media post ideas that you can use today. So download my freebie, and there's 47 different things that you can try. I'll jump over to the show notes, and we'll have that link for you as well. So next week, we're talking about values and why our guests suggest that you forego a quick profit for values-based long-term gains. It was a great interview and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy it. So until then, stay safe, stay happy and SBT audience, remember to implement. Enjoy your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to Small Business Talk podcast and head on over to smallbusinesstalk.com.au forward slash downloads for all the show notes and links to this episode. Remember, to be great, you must start. Pick one tip from today's episode, take action and implement it. Let's meet again next week at the same time and place. Until then, take action and SBT community, enjoy your journey.